Let me read to you a passage from the sixth chapter of St. Luke's Gospel, verses 36 to 38. It's the Gospel for Monday of the second week of Lent. <clears throat> Jesus said to his disciples, Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Stop judging, and you will not be judged. Stop condemning, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and gifts will be given to you. A good measure, packed together, shaken down, and overflowing, will be poured into your lap. For the measure with which you measure will in return be measured out to you. That's from Luke chapter 6, verse 36 to 38, on Monday of the second week of Lent. We are led to think of the cross. What do I mean? Well, as we think of the history of man's religions, we cannot but be struck by the various impressions of the divine that feature in them. Those images of the divine, those images of the gods and of the powers above, profoundly affect the way their devotees treat other people and act in society. There are gods of war, and various gods are portrayed as being at war among themselves, and of wreaking vengeance on those who offend them. Societies who attack others, and engage in mayhem and terrorism, appeal to their god or their religion for sanction for what they are doing, and indeed for inspiration. All too often religion has caused strife and suffering in the human community rather than being a powerful force for peace. It is one of the points pressed home repeatedly in the teaching of modern popes that authentic religion cannot be a cause of conflict among men. Well now, let us turn to the divine founder of the Christian religion <clears throat> and consider his teaching on this matter. Not only does he warn against all violent actions, but he warns against all violent thoughts. Just as we are not to act harmfully towards others, so we are not to think harmfully of others. The religion he reveals governs hearts. Moreover, there is an ominous and very serious sanction accompanying his warning. For the measure with which you measure will in return be measured out to you. Christ tells us that we are to be merciful, that we are to refrain from judging and condemning. He tells us that we are to forgive, and with these stipulations comes the information that what we do to others in like measure will be done to us. Moreover, if we are generous, then gifts will be given to you, a good measure, packed together, shaken down, and overflowing will be poured into your lap. This is not only a firm and authoritative guide to our particular thoughts, words and actions all through life. <clears throat> it is a guide to the direction of our heart's transformation. We are to work at putting on the mind of Christ in the very depths of our mind, heart and soul. What Christ lays down is above, is above all a picture of the contours and character of his own sacred heart. He was merciful. He gave and he forgave. The emblematic sign of this is Christ dead on the cross, having suffered and died for sinners and for all those who offend and disregard him who is our God. By our sins we put him there, and yet he is merciful and forgiving to us all and to everyone. Furthermore, Christ tells us that the one who looks on him looks on the Father. The heart of Christ is the image of that of the Father. And just as Christ is merciful and generous to those who do not deserve it, so too is the Father. So the heart of the Father is what is described in our Gospel today. 
Of course, the time will come when God will indeed judge. Till then, he shows extraordinary mercy and compassion. And one of the many pictures of this is the indulgent father in Christ's parable of the prodigal son. God reveals himself as a father rich in mercy, and his almighty power is shown precisely in his mercy. So our Lord's words in today's gospel passage are a description of the heart of God, as much as they are a command to us. <clears throat> they lay down how God deals with us who are sinners until the day of judgment comes. And if we cast ourselves on his mercy, we can hope that even in his judgment, he will show us mercy. So let us take this teaching as our cue for striving to know the heart of God and what he has revealed of himself. We ought aim to know the love of God so as to be able to imitate our Heavenly Father in our thoughts, in our words, and in our deeds. God is love, and our calling in life is to be like him. What Christ asks us to do in today's Gospel is a profoundly revolutionary program for true success in life. The way Christ achieved success was through the cross. That cross involved mercy, forgiveness, generous giving. As a result, God his Father raised him on high, setting the pattern for all those who choose to entrust themselves to him and to follow in his footsteps. <clears throat>